Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Top Cut. I'm Krims, and uh, it's good to be back. And with me is Drew Holden, Kyle Sukovich, and Michael Pramalot. We have been on hiatus for uh, pretty much three out of the last four weeks or something like that. So it's been a little bit of a downtime in the Pokemon community, and we apologize in case you guys missed this, but we're back. And uh, this show is actually going to be dedicated to all of you guys. So before we get started, uh, I do want to let you know that any questions you guys may have, will all be answered tonight, and I'm going to link you guys to the Facebook page where you guys can ask them. In the meantime, let me introduce myself. I'm Krems. Um, I'm a player from SoCal and Arizona, and I uh, have been around forever. So uh, in case you guys haven't seen us or anything like that, you're welcome to say hi to us at, at the future events. I'm going to be at all three states, hopefully. And, um, yeah, what about you, Krem? Uh Yeah, um player from Virginia. Um, let's see. Best accomplishment, I guess, would be world, second place at Worlds. Um, yeah, like, like always, uh, come say hi if you see us and see me at an event. Um, always, always nice to meet new people, kind of like that. And, um, yeah. And Kyle. My name is Kyle Sugovich from Wisconsin, and uh, my best accomplishment is winning the Kenosha, Wisconsin City Championship. <laughs> He's not kidding. He really is. That those terms are really hard. Whoa, um, was that the one with Kaboot Ops? No, that was this year. Oh. Where, uh, <laughs> Vernola conceded to me in the final. Oh, yeah. Actually, really quick, can you tell us the Kaboot Ops story? Because I really Kaboot Ops story. Boy, yeah. that's, that's, uh, this. I don't even want to get into this. I'll let Drew do his first, then we'll get into it. All right. Well, All right. I mean, we could just skip me and go straight to that. More interesting. <laughs> well, his name is uh, above his face, and uh, no. why don't you tell us a little bit about you, yourself <laughs> since Krim started this. Well, I've been second at Nats once. Uh, I might be going to some states this year. I think I'll be at Ohio. That's about it, though. We got work now. Nah, I'm a working man. It sucks. Don't ever do it. Whatever. Well, whatever. Your childhood. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Real quick before we get started with the questions, please entertain the crowd with your Kaboot Ops story. This, this is, is going to be though. quick. <laughs> uh, so there was a time long, long ago when uh, Wizards of the Coast was in charge of Pokemon trading card game, and there was a transition period where Nintendo took over, and pretty much every competitive player. Quit the game. <laughs> uh, for the most part, everybody kind of stopped playing Pokemon when Nintendo took over. It took a while for everybody to get back into it, including me. I didn't play for city championships that first season until uh, my good friend Abe called me on a whim. I had not seen him in months, and he's like, hey, you going to the state championship next week? And I was like, what's the state championship? Because they had never had those before. And uh, he told me about it. I was like, sure, I'll go look at it what Pokemon cards I have, maybe uh, put together a deck, and we'll go. And so I searched the internet, I found Poke Gym, and apparently Blaziken was a big deck at the time. You know, the good old Firestarter one and Rayquaza EX. Um, I'm sure Drew won many a city championship with that deck. Oh, and I so, <laughs> And so I decided I should run a water Pokemon, because water beats fire. So I looked through all the water Pokemon, and I saw Kabutops EX. And I was like, all right, this is my guy. Uh, I just got to flip two out of three heads, and he knocks out a Blaziken EX. Just like that, and I'm going to win Sound the game. Logic. Sound yeah. logic. Right there. <laughs> all I got to do is play a boost energy, and I get three flips. If I get two heads, you know, it's over. And then I need to play Crystal Shard for the Rayquaza EX. So um, I buy... <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> yeah, I did. So I buy my uh, Kabuto CX on eBay for three dollars each. Um, thought it was a steal. I later learned I probably got ripped off at that price. But um, anyway, I showed up to states, round one. Uh, I got pretty much steamrolled. <laughs> so my deck was pretty bad, uh, which I realized very quickly. You have to take into consideration, I didn't really play test at all. I didn't really know anybody who was playing anymore. So I just showed up with this Kabutops EX deck and uh, hoped for the best. 
And uh, round two, I also lost. So here I am. I started 0-2. I'm uh, pretty down. And round three, I face a Team Magma theme deck, which um, literally a theme deck. He did not add any additional cards. So he goes first, starts with Team Magma's Aaron, which uh, has some spectacular attacks. You know, for one energy, it does 10. For two, it does 20. And uh, I start with a Buried Fossil, which has 30 hit points. He uh, attaches, does 10 to my Buried Fossil. I draw. And uh, I realize I have no way to avoid being knocked out by Team Magma's Aaron. And I'm about to go 0-3, losing to a Team Magma's theme deck. So mm. I uh, pass. He thinks about it. Puts an energy onto his bench, Team Magma's ball toy. So instead of attaching to the active and doing 20 and winning the game, he does 10 damage again. And then I draw my card, and he's like, Oh, man, I could have won there, huh? And, I was, and he's like, oh, that's okay. I didn't want to win like that anyway. And then I evolved, and I set up, and I won. <laughs> so then I won my next three games. I'm 3-2. and two. Still probably shouldn't have made it. But uh, I faced a 10-year-old in the last round. Now, I have no idea how I got paired down to a 10-year-old, but in fact, I did and he happened to be playing a Sceptile deck, which I am weak to grass, and he also resists water. So I'm about to lose to a 10-year-old and get knocked out of this tournament. But somehow, through my masterful play skills, I outplay the 10-year-old um, and uh, defeat the Sceptile deck, and he runs away crying, and I feel bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm 4-2. And somehow I make it in after beating a 10-year-old as the 8th seed. After starting 0-2, beating a 10-year-old. Let that sink in. I have made top cut at the, city, or at the state championship of Illinois. And I'm facing Dave Coleman, who is undefeated with his Blaziken deck. And then they do deck checks. And they find out, oh, I forgot to list Strength Charm on my deck list. So, <laughs> you're right. yeah, serves me right. And uh, I have to replace the strength term with the basic energy, and also I get a game loss for the first game of uh, the match play. So I have to win two straight games with my Kabutopsy X deck that almost lost to a 10-year-old uh, against the undefeated player, and uh, I beat him in two pretty quick games. So feeling pretty good. You know, he got a pretty bad start both games. I actually played the horrible fighting Skyridge Kabutops, which did like 50 for three. I knocked out a lone Del Caddy, took him out. <laughs> Um, oh. <laughs> then uh, top four, I faced a Swampert deck, which go figure, I have a good matchup against my against Swampert deck. Kabutopsy X is actually pretty good against it, thanks to my uh, wonderful potion and spiral drain combo on Kabutopsy X, <laughs> healing you know 40 damage a turn, knocking out this uh, Swampert in two hits. So I win my top four game, move on to the finals against the Team Aqua deck, which. He has Team Aqua's Lantern, Team Aqua's Manectric. Both of them are Lightning, and I'm weak to Lightning. So if he ever decided to attack with those things, I'd probably lose. But he decides to attack with his Team Aqua's Kyogre, and uh, I win in two games. And there we go. I win the state championship. Good FCX. Woo! You actually beat a Team Aqua deck in the finals? I didn't know that part. Yeah. No, it was a real deck, but uh, he didn't play it correctly. Yeah, Team Aqua was actually solid. All right, well, this is exactly why you're not the greatest theoretical mind, all right? I'm just letting you know, the greatest theoretical mind would immediately think of a and I'm like, hell no, that ain't good. There's no way. <laughs> What's the recalling the deal for you? Later that year, he started, he played uh, Walren. Yeah, Walren. Yeah. I wonder who beat that deck. Which gets extremely hard countered by Blossom. <laughs> well, that's, that's a whole another, other story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm trip down memory lane, man. Seriously. Anyways, <laughs> let's get on to the questions. All right. So, anyways, uh, like I said, today is dedicated to you guys, the viewers. And without further ado, we're just going to get on to your guys' questions. And, again, if you guys have any questions, I mean, honestly, sky's a little bit. Whatever questions you guys may have, go ahead and ask them. Can't guarantee we're going to answer them if they're a little bit too weird, but we'll see what we can do. Um, and, yeah, wow, we got a ton of questions. Let's see. 
Uh, first question is from Carlos Duran Jr. With speedy Mewtwo decks likely to dominate states, uh, will Black Belt become playable? I'll shoot that one to Pram, who seems to have played the most out of the three of us, four of us. Um, let's see. So if speed and Mewtwo decks are see a lot of play, will Black Belt be viable? Is that it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, no. Because, like, first off, if there if it's speed Mewtwo, well, your counter to Mewtwo is should be Mewtwo. I mean, I can't imagine like other, or Mew like Mew Prime or something. Like, you can like see off Mew Prime for Zorark and then get, try to come back that way. But honestly, a, a better comeback card would just be Twins. So you would play Twins before Mewtwo or before Black Belt. But um. Yeah, with decks like Durant still. Like, Durant, still good, guys, so um, watch out for that. But yeah, Black Belt, no good. Unless it's Typhlosion, then, you know, why not? Okay. Anybody want to disagree with uh, Cram's assessment? Or do you guys feel like he's got a spot on? Is Black Belt before or after Weakness? I think it's before. It should be before. Uh, even then, like, random psychic Pokemon are, like... Yeah. You're probably playing Mewtwo yourself, and I don't see why you would need Black Belt. Yeah. You already have weakness. Okay. Yeah, I think Black Belt's always been sort of an underrated card. Well, plus 40 is pretty big. But, um... I think this should be the best example of how stupid EXs kind of are. When you have a Reshram that does 120 damage, and then you play a Black Belt to add 40 damage... And you don't even knock out the Mewtwo EX. Um, that kind of speaks to the strength of all these EXs, especially when you factor in EV Light. So uh, I don't know if Black Belt's worth it, just because even though you're playing it, you're still not going to knock out things in one hit, <laughs> which is sad. I'm going to ask you guys a question that I'm pretty sure is going to get asked throughout the rest of the show. So I kind of just want to set a base for the show. Uh, and it involves Mewtwo EX. Now that the set's out, uh, I personally have not played Tessa yet. Um, I was in Vegas and all that, but I'm going to obviously start because I want to do all the states. But Me2EX, is it the real deal? First question. Is it the real deal? And we'll start with uh, Kyle. Well, let me tell you, I played a few games on Pokemon TCG Online. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. you know that works very well. It's very accurate for testing. Uh, but there is not a scarier feeling than when your opponent puts down a Mewtwo EX and you don't have one. <laughs> uh, you're just like, oh boy. That has a lot of hit points. I don't really have a way to deal with that. Unless you're playing Mew. But it's just like, wow, I can't deal with that. It has so much HP and it's just like destroying my stuff. So yeah, it's the real deal. Yeah, I All think right. people are going to figure that out once they start playing with it. Drew, do you agree? Yeah, it definitely uh, forces you to think about it. You, Like Kyle said, you just can't deal with that amount of HP and the damage it can do. So your deck either has to deal with it with your own Mewtwo or Mew, or you're playing Magnezone, something that can KO it, because there's nothing you can do. So about the real deal. It. Yeah, the real deal, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Empram, what do you think? Yeah, it's good. Um, it it starts off slow, sorta. Like, if they don't have energy on it, you're only doing like 40, but nothing knocks you out. So like next turn, you're doing like 60 or 80, and if they ever attach an energy, that thing it just gets one shotted. And um, yeah, it's not like a. I don't think it's good enough to be. It's like the attack type is not really like a main attacker type. But it's like, you just put it in, you can, it's splashable in everything, so, um, yeah, it, it's just too good. It's too good in everything, and everyone's so just going to be playing Mewtwo. Pretty much every day. Yeah, everyone's just going to be playing Mewtwo. Okay. At least, at least one of, maybe more. Okay, so now that we've got that established, um, if you guys agree or disagree with us, please let us know. And obviously, I'm, I'm sure that's going to end up being the main topic of this show tonight, uh, whether we wanted it to or not. Just because it's, it's on everybody's mind, and 
it's understandable because it's it's got such big hype. It's gotten such ridiculous prices online, uh, from what I've heard. Um, I've I've seen people just randomly message me constantly and go like, "Man, do you think Mewtwo's going to go up or or, high, or lower? Do you think I can maybe wait till you know states comes closer?" And I'm like, "Dude, I don't know. I wouldn't gamble it to be honest." Um, but that just I mean the the amount of hype that it's getting is just unbelievable. And uh, apparently it's uh, it's gotten the hype for for a good reason. So. All right, Ian Asplund asks, what are some of your favorite cards from Next Destinies other than Me Too EX? Because that's the obvious one. Um, go ahead, Drew. The guy who's not looking <laughs> at uh, Chris, Just Chris kidding, Bender. not Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, not Drew. Michael Pramo, go ahead. All right, uh, I'll probably take Krem's answer here, so he'll have to think of a new one. But Level Ball. Uh, level ball is really good. It, yes, got it. <laughs> um, so basically, what level ball does, it gets any Pokemon that's 90 HP or low, or lower from your deck into your hand, to trainer, and that's really good because it gets like it can get electric, it can get um, Electrode Prime. Uh, it just gets random basics. Um, let's see, it gets any stage one for the most part. And it just kind of like sets you up. Like it can't get EXs, clearly, but it can get anything that helps the EX out. So it's really, really good. And you can just jump Garment for again. So like, you you get some really cool turns with uh, Level Ball. Okay, uh, Kyle. Uh, I think Skyro Bridge is one of the best cards in the set. <clears throat> um, Minus one retreat on your basics is pretty absurd. It opens up a lot of doors to use Pokemon that you probably wouldn't use before. For example, Salvi Prime. Uh, Smeargle is also another one. And just having one less retreat on stuff like Tornadus is really, really good. Uh, I've played nothing but this Tornadus Celebi deck that I put together. It's supposed to have Mewtwo in it, but I don't have Mewtwo. So <laughs> it's really just been Celebi and Tornadus. And uh, I've won 16 games in a row, so um, it's got to be something to it. Sky Arrow Bridge is just really good. I think you'll see its impact at States. Okay. Andrew? Uh, I really like all these trainers. They all seem like they have a place. Even uh, Experience Share has nostalgic value. Yeah. Uh, I, like that one. <laughs> I like Prism Energy, though. It gives you flexibility. You don't have to do the rainbow energy anymore where you put the 10 damage on your guys. So I ran into some weird good. situations with uh, Prism Energy not being rainbow because I was using um, Trode. I was like, oh man, I can't outrage for knockout because this is not a rainbow energy. <laughs> 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 so um, for the most part, it's a plus. But if you're playing the dragons, then <laughs> rainbow is actually kind of nice. Agreed. All right, well, yeah, Pram took my answer. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of Level Ball. I think Level Ball is probably, the, I mean, it's definitely the best trainer out of the set, but um, it might be, like, the sleeper card. Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, what what trainer do you think gives it? Heavy Ball is pretty good. Yeah, Heavy, heavy Ball is good. good. but Level Ball is better. Level Ball is just... <laughs> well, it depends what you're playing, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. You can't... It depends on your... I don't know. No, that's like I, saying... I know, I know, but, no, that's no, like no, saying... What I'm saying is, like... Rick Handy's good. Level Ball is way more universal, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Heavy like, ball level ball really? Things. How much oh. stuff has 90 HP or less? All the set of basics. Uh, you have stuff, I mean, basically non-EXs and non-like Zekroms are not attackers. And for that, you have other other stuff. Well, let me... But the same thing happens with uh, with the Heavy Ball. How many uh, how many targets does Heavy Ball get that... Uh, this that, is a really uh, easy question. Magnezone. Magnezone. <laughs> Magnezone. Embor. Yeah. Reshram exactly. EX. Zekrom EX. <laughs> Uh, Except for the attackers and, and the big evolutions. The level ball is very good, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I guess it's not undisputed, apparently, but uh, <laughs> arguably, arguably, it's the best card, best trainer in the set. I'm just uh, curious to know what you're searching for. Are you playing, like, Noctowl or something? What is 90 HP or less that you need to keep searching for? Eel trick, man. Just eel trick. Eel trick. Can yeah. you play Pokemon Collector? <laughs> Yes, you do, but the level ball just helps. It, it's very universal, is what I'm trying to say. Yes, heavy ball is great. I'm not. I'm not saying I wouldn't play heavy ball. I'm just saying, arguably, it's the best card. It's the best trainer card. Uh, as far as Pokemon are concerned, I think Shaman EX is actually pretty decent, um, and we're actually going to be seeing a little bit of it, I'm sure, 
It's just, it's got such a good attack at the end of the game. Um, and obviously the two balls are extremely good. <laughs> um, I don't know how I feel about Shame and EX. I think it's... It, it's it looks good, late game. Yeah, yeah, yeah but like, like good, you kind of have to pop it out like at prize five. Or else it's... Or just, four. Well, uh, only against the X's. And even yeah. then, it's like 150. That's not a knockout. Sad. <laughs> Sad, but true. Uh, <laughs> but, like, very good. So, um, like, prize five? Yeah, I guess. Uh, that's only when your opponent's at prize five, not when you're at prize five, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. For each prize card your opponent is taking. Hope and the you're synthesis, at a prize the race. Very bad, dude. Like, people are underrating synthesis with uh, combined with uh, Skyro Bridge. So I'm not saying it's a great card. I mean, I'm not saying it's a, the best card. Uh, obviously, Nietzsche's got that covered. But as far as the X is your concern, I see. I think it's definitely going to see some play. Um, and uh, ultimately, that's that's what's going to matter the most because. The, the set itself, Next Destinies, isn't very good if we really think about it. Like, the actual Pokemon cards, aside from DXs, and some of the EXs aren't playable, really, but um, aside from the EXs, you're not really going to be getting too many uh, additions to decks, and obviously the trainer cards are all very good. So. Are you kidding me? And what do you, how do you guys feel about uh, Silent Bile, or Cylinder, or however you pronounce it? Oh, card's great. I like it. I've been playing, uh, I've been messing around with uh, Magnazone Embor, just because. I saw Scylla and I was like, oh, man, this is going to be so cool, <laughs> right? And, yeah. um, yeah, it's actually pretty good. Uh, has some rough matchups here and there. I don't know if it's Tier 1 or anything, but uh, if you really want to play Magnezone Embor, go for it. it. It's back, sort of. Kyle, do you think the Scylla's pretty good? I think it's solid. I just don't know what you play it in besides Magnebor. Like it doesn't fit in any other deck. Maybe a Celebi deck, but even then you probably wouldn't play it. <clears throat> Got it. Alright, here we go. Kuron Hill. What will the price of Miku settle at? Uh, also, aren't there supposed to be Zekrom, Rushrom, Kirim Tim coming out soon? Uh, and Ian actually answered the, the Tim question in case we didn't know. Uh, the Tim's come out on March 21st. In other words, only comes their Miku states. Oh, good. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see, What what's it, it's like at 70 now, 80 now, 70, 80 now? I think the full art is at 70. No, they both are. Yeah, yeah. I'm throwing right. through it at least. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it'll sell, settle at 55, maybe? Well, settle when is... After states. After states? Well, by then there's a huge influx of boxes. Uh, people are going to realize 4 Mewtwo is just bad. Um, so, people aren't going to stock up on that many Mewtwo's, so... Probably around 50 after states. 50, 60, something like that. Disagreement? Uh, no, I think so. it'll be lower. Lower? <laughs> can't be 50 bucks. That's so much. Yeah. Yeah, But like. I don't. Magnazone and Yan Mega <laughs> hit oh, yeah, prices like that. <laughs> Lugia EX also hit ridiculous prices. Um, and hit like 100, didn't it? I don't remember. I, I, mean, I remember having, like, the one, and that's all you needed. <laughs> but, uh, and that's... Yeah, there's been plenty of cards that have hit that higher prices, so I wouldn't be surprised if Mewtwo stays around 50 or so. Yeah, I mean, like, also, the set's new, like, it just came out, so there's not a huge supply of Mewtwo right now. As yeah. people buy more packs, <laughs> uh, open more boxes, as States goes on, you know, more Mewtwo's will get circulated. So... Yeah, it'll it'll go down. Depends. I mean, look how long Rising Rivals was out, and still Luxray was like a hundred dollars at one point. Yeah, so, but the fact just, that there's multiple Mewtwo though might uh, yeah, there's two different types of Mewtwo. Uh, yeah, but you only needed like one or two Luxray level X, and it was still a hundred dollars. Hmm. So you need like two or three Mewtwo's for a deck, maybe. So I don't know. I don't know. I, We'll it's see. hard to tell. Well, yeah, I, I feel like Mewtwo is only going to be good for like a set. For sure. A set? Yeah, like up till nationals, and then Mewtwo gets just like gets. Oh, I'm just going to call it here. Mewtwo gets destroyed by Dark Dot Deck. Just All calling right. it now. He called it, folks. The most easy call in the history of the game. <laughs> <laughs>
right. Uh, next question is for me and Aslan. Uh, what states will you all be at? Uh, specifically wondering about Crims. I may be at Nevada, and I'm curious if he'll be there. Oh, buddy, you better believe I'll be there. Um, I'm going to be there for sure, no matter what. Guaranteed I'll be at Nevada. Uh, I'm trying to go to Arizona, Nevada, and California. Should happen. Only way I don't see it happening is, um, honestly, is if my poker career <laughs> gets in the way, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> Um, I'll be there. I'll be at all. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll go next. Uh, I'm going to be at uh, Virginia for sure. And then afterwards, I think I'm going to Delaware. And after that, uh, I don't know. I know I'm going to one on week three, but I don't know where it's going to be. Maybe. Uh, I, actually, I just don't know, honestly. Worst case, New York. I guess, but hopefully it's not that far. Well, um, for the first week, I have no idea. Uh, I have nothing within like six hours of me. So, hey, hey. Uh, congratulations! Now you know what it feels like. Week one <laughs> might not happen, but uh, it depends on whether or not Iowa decides to post when they're running their state championship. If it's in week one, then I'll go to that. Otherwise, the closest one to me would actually be same one as Drew, which is Ohio. Woo! Which is <laughs> good eight-hour drive. So, so just far. good the night before and crushing Drews. <laughs> Man, I don't feel like driving eight hours for states, but we'll see. The night uh, before, no, you're not going so just for states. You're going for states and Drew. That's still a long drive. I'm not gonna be there, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew, we... Drew will make you breakfast and I'll wave you goodbye in the morning <laughs> <laughs> and weeks 2 and 3 I have Wisconsin and Illinois okay so Wisconsin and Illinois and maybe maybe Ohio uh, oh, Ohio not... probably not happening if I have to drive there just fly man yeah, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Moneybags not made of money here <laughs> Fine. I see how it is. <laughs> Alright, so you're doing only Ohio, Drew? I think so. Uh, we'll see how work develops, but it's looking like only Ohio. And only because it's a five minute walk. <laughs> 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 Guy's just not going to show up to his own five minute walk. It must be nice, really. <laughs> Quick aside, if I'm in Las Vegas when, uh, when all these things are going on, I think I'm going to have to drive something like I don't know how long for uh, for uh, the LA one. I don't know, but uh, then Phoenix is going to be another five hours or so. It's just basically going to be five hours everywhere. But at least I'll be able to get Las Vegas in my hometown. So yeah. we'll see what happens. If Las Vegas is my hometown, that's pretty cool too. You know, so can't argue. And uh, Pram, what are yours going to be? I already went with mine, but uh, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll I'll review. <laughs> it's going to be. Um, <laughs> Virginia, and then <laughs> Delaware, and then question mark, but it looks like New York, which is far for me. But, All right. Yeah. Wait, how far is New York for me? Uh, okay. I don't know where in New York. If it's southern New York, maybe four or five hours. If it's like in the middle of New York, um, I don't know. Wow. Somebody actually has dedication, unlike Kyle. Um, well, I'm probably not driving. I am driving five hours to Wisconsin. I'm probably, prob I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll carpool with someone there, but yes, same. Wisconsin is not just a little hick state where you can drive 30 minutes and get everywhere. I don't believe <laughs> you. It's I'm in southern big. Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, which is uh, my states for Wisconsin is basically in Minnesota. That's what it wow. is. Basically, they're going to be seeing some uh, good old Canucks there, huh? Uh, I don't think so. We'll see. <laughs> Andrew Wamble uh, says, is there, any is there any reason to own more than three of any single EX? I've yet to build a deck where I've wanted more than three of any EX in it. Um, it's a good question. What do you guys think? Um, uh, <laughs> you only have six prizes. If yeah. three get packed out, it's over. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much uh, right there. Like, even three is excessive unless like you're only attacking with that one EX, right? 
So, like, if you have other attackers, then three is actually a little high. You probably just want to go with two. Because, like, it's going to be, like, the worst when, um, at the end of the game, you're, ho you're just holding, like, two EXs, and you have, like, the one on the active spot, and it's the same EX, and you're just like, cool, these, are, these guys are useless. So, you can just add in other cards, and okay. probably just keep it at two. Unless you're going on, really hard on one specific <coughs> EX. Depends on whether or not you want to start with Mewtwo. <laughs> then you would run four. Yeah, Otherwise... I want to start with Mewtwo. Actually, Mewtwo's a nice starter. Um, so I said, yeah. <laughs> I think Mewtwo's actually unless, pretty good. Threat. Unless... They also start with Mewtwo. <laughs> <laughs> then you and run into, into <laughs> the worst weird starter. Stale they have yeah. their double colors. <laughs> it's like they, it's like yeah, I'll attach one energy. <laughs> I also will attach. Ooh, will I attach energy? Well, if to you this? attach your one energy, doesn't like he one hit KO you with no, the no, double no, no. And Do the math. Power? Twenty times. Yeah, double so, codes and plus power, right? That's six. That's uh one thirty. Forty. No, that's so much HP, Graham. No. That's only one forty. Three energy total would be sixty times yeah, two. It's one twenty. Yeah, no, I might. There's 170 hit points. <laughs> Eight? No, no, no. Four energies and a plus power. Is okay, come, 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 come. Before plus you, plus. before you start doing math. Four remember, energy and a plus power. Remember the rule that, we'll that you do yeah, not do says, math on you stream. Don't attach an energy. Unless <laughs> they have an evil light. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, they attach an energy. You don't want to attach an energy because then they they attach a double colorless and a plus power. I'm right. You guys are wrong. Unless what they, they got an evil light, then you need two plus powers. Yeah. But still, you don't want to attach the energy most of the time, is what I'm trying to say. If they attach the first well, energy, you don't attach the energy, then Well, if you don't attach the energy, then they just put energy number two on, not then DCE. You attach your double colorless and no, 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 no. Not DCE. Just yeah. normal energy. And that, they hit that's you why for you 80. Don't DC. They can't do that because then they risk uh, running into a double colorless plus power. They have an Evil light on it. <laughs> double colorless two plus power. God. <laughs> They're playing against Michael Pramel. It's going to happen. Then the next Mewtwo comes down, and then everything Pram falls just stays over. quiet. Pram's like, you're right. No, I'm like, I'm, I'm like baffled on how... How no, bad... Makes, you... No, 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 listen, it makes sense. You don't want to... Basically, your opponent attaches the first energy. You probably don't want to attach energy back. Unless it's going to be a double colors. Because, I'm sure... Well, I mean, I can't believe we're getting into this argument right now. <laughs> but, basically, you attach the energy. You run the risk of your opponent just taking two free prizes for no reason. Then you can you pay back. How? You just ran out of energies in play. It, you ran out of two energy. Big, big Yeah. Deal. You just dedicated your energy to... Oh, okay. <laughs> Moral of the story. We'll focus you on do not thing. want to start with Mewtwo. Versus their Mewtwo. You don't want to go second and have your opponent start with Mewtwo. You start with Mewtwo. That's what you don't want to do. That's the that is thing. correct. You, just you don't want to start with Mewtwo. Because then you avoid all this crap. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Let's see. Um... <laughs> So yeah, the, there is no reason to start to own three of any single ax. <laughs> Zach Tyler, uh, what decks do you guys like the most for testing right now? And uh, we'll defer to Kyle and Pram because they're the two testers right now. Well, I don't know how much testing I've actually done. I've played on PTCGO, and I've beaten 16 straight opponents with Celebi and Tornadus just using Hurricane over and over. So... Uh, that's what I've been using. Uh, I also played Terrakian, I guess. So uh, I'm just using Hurricane and Retaliate, and I've won 16 games in a row. So that's what I'm using. Sky Arrow Bridge, Celebi, pretty good. <laughs> well, on uh, PTCGO also, I've <laughs> used uh, Zeb Stryka because it's cool. <laughs> and um, yeah, that, yeah, it's the Menace Tricky X guy, and apparently. Uh, PTCGO loses to Disconnect. So, yeah. PTCGO loses to Disconnect? Oh, ooh. That was good. I didn't even think about that one. Yeah. <laughs> but both... Um, anyways. So, yeah. PTCGO uh, can't really deal with Trainer Lock. And um, live testing, the only deck I've tested was Embor Magnezone and Electrode. Oh, and Durant. Because... But that doesn't really change much. But uh, Trode gets a little better with Level Ball, which makes it really nice. 
and Embor Magnezone gets a total overhaul uh, with Heavy Ball and Cillian. Yeah, it's actually really satisfying taking three prizes versus Mewtwo. But okay. the deck is a little clunky, so I, my favorite's Magnezone Embor just because it's cool. But uh, has it been working out for you? Uh, yeah, pretty. Pretty well. Um, trying to think of its mashups. It, it does. It does well versus Durant, sorta. It it, it um. It can. <laughs> versus basic decks, it kind of just rolls on them. But versus setup decks, you're just kind of like, oh god, please. Let me live and long enough to, face like setup, like. Magnezone, uh, Eels is kind of a bad matchup. <laughs> well, I like how Drew's uh, kind of like just zoning out right now because this question <laughs> does not apply to him or me. <laughs> but uh, this next question kind of will. And Confessor Davila asks, how do you guys play test and choose decks? And I, I want to focus on Drew for this because obviously he's like, uh, I think he's the everyman that doesn't have uh, very much time to play test, just like myself. And um, basically you, you have to play test uh, a lot in a short amount of time, right? Or am I... Well, uh, I think you have to have a good core of people that you trust because they'll help you eliminate a lot of choices right there. So if I'm asking people what's the good play, I'll believe them, and hopefully they're right, and I won't walk into anything horrible the day of the event. But So that's uh, it right so basically, there. So basically you're much, relying on other people's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> so I trust other people that... Uh, I'll play as many games as I can in the time frame based on what they said and work my own tweaks into the decks. Okay. That's what I do. In that case, Kyle, <laughs> please uh, detail how you play test and how you prepare for tournaments, especially major right. tournaments. So, uh, first of all, it's important to note what kind of testing you actually want to do. Are you testing to tweak your deck list or are you testing to kind of just figure out what's good those are separate kinds of testing um, just tweaking your deck list that's a little different that would just mean like maybe just playing a matchup over and over and over and seeing okay I need to change this here this here and uh, maybe I need to add in one card to fix this matchup here but um, <clears throat> the other way is just to play a deck against all different sorts of decks, see if your deck functions, and uh, I think one of the important things I learned over the year was not to just take things at face value, like say, oh, I won 16 games in a row with this deck, it must be good. Um, just kind of look back and see, first of all, should I have won those games? Does my deck actually work, or did I just kind of get lucky over and over? Um, can I feel comfortable actually bringing this deck to a tournament? Do I think I can actually beat people with it? And um, I think when you're preparing for tournaments, another thing is preparing for best two out of three. Can you win a best two out of three match? Uh, these are all big things when you're trying to test decks and eliminate what you think is good and bad. Uh, it's not an easy process, but just kind of something you have to figure out over the course of time. It's a lot of trial and error. And uh, Pram is actually the only one out of our group who specifically has a team that he tests with. Um, uh, so yes, Pram, yeah. Please de yeah. So, can you please detail uh, what, how you test? Uh, well, basically, we just get together maybe a week or two before states or before any event in general, and we just kind of pound out one day, uh, maybe two days of just testing, right? And we'll go. Th we'll like. We'll take a deck that we kind of like run it through, uh, we'll test it versus the world, which is which means you just test it versus everything. And um, if it runs into like a bad matchup versus something popular, then you go, why is it bad? And then you, if it's unfixable, then you have to scrap the idea. But um, generally, it's just grinding out games. Uh, you can't really replace uh, playing games with a deck. Like, even with Drew's, I'm just gonna... Like, I do that too, to be honest. Uh, uh, 
So I, I don't just purely drug like playing just playing every matchup for every deck is kind of pointless. You don't need to do that. That's just playing more games than you uh, even need to. You kind of just want to pick a deck and then play the matchups that from that side of the board. Like you don't you don't really care on why they're doing what they're doing. You just want to know, okay, they're doing that. How do I respond? Um, so you just got to grind out games like that. And, uh, yeah. Like, even Drew takes, even when he gets an idea, he still plays, like, a couple games. To, they kind of figure out how it works and uh, what what he needs to add in to kind of, like, fix it up a little bit. So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The other thing I want to throw in. <laughs> Um, the quality of your opponents is a big thing when you're testing. So, Absolutely. I'll use my example again where I've won a bunch of games in a row uh, with this deck, but when you look at who I've beaten with it, it's just been random people on Pokemon TCG Online. So, really, my results don't mean anything, and just because I'm beating random people's Embor decks and uh, people who are playing Bill doesn't mean that uh, my deck is that good. Now, you have to take into account that your opponent actually knows what they're doing when they're playing. Because if you play against someone who really doesn't understand how to play, then your results are pretty skewed, and you don't get good results. So that's another big thing when you're <coughs> testing. Make sure you find good partners that will actually help you find actual results, not just fluky things where your opponent screws up and lets you win. Um, one thing I do is... I have kind of like a little system that I've developed over these last 12 years, which is I, I got a group of friends that I decided were good enough that, you know, I could definitely trust their ideas and their opinions. And um, I kind of just bounce ideas off of these guys. They don't necessarily know each other, or they, they don't necessarily test with each other, but I'm kind of like the, I don't know, I guess like the octopus with all these different arms. <laughs> um, and, uh, and my job, in my opinion, uh, is to theorize. And I just send out all these random ideas, and I just run and bounce them through. Kyle is one of these guys. Pram is another one of these guys. Um, and I just, you know, let them know. And then sometimes they back, they, they shoot back a bunch of like, oh, man, you're so bad. Why did you think of this? Blah, blah, blah. And sometimes. I'll say, oh, yeah. Sometimes like, it's oh, okay, like... that makes sense. <laughs> um, well, he only needs one to work for it to be a <laughs> theoretical genius, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, one of mine works, and it sticks. And uh, the moment it does, I feel like a genius, because I just broke the format, in my opinion. And we just work off of that. So um, I, I do do a lot of theory. Uh, that's just, it's my style. It's the way that I like to work. And, yeah, I mean, obviously, you, you have to get some games. And if you don't do, if you don't put, put the games in, you're just not going to, all the theory in the world isn't going to help you out, because you're just, you're gonna have flaws. You're, uh, if you don't know how matches work out exactly, how thing, how games, you know, tend to play out, then you're just not gonna know how to, how to be able to, um, you know, beat a specific deck. And these things definitely, uh, they definitely work in your favor. So I like to do the the whole theorizing thing just because it's a lot easier for me. Um, I get to do a lot more things at once because I don't dedicate. Unfortunately, I don't dedicate as much time to this game as I would like. But um, uh, I like to maximize my time that way. So everybody's got their own different style. I know that Pram's style is probably the most effective just because he gets the most amount of games in and he's got an actual circle of friends that are all as dedicated as him and they all just bounce these ideas off of each other while they're in the same building. You can't you can't really uh, substitute that. I mean, we try, but the uh, fact of the matter is if you're actually going to be dedicated to this game and you, and you have a circle of friends that's dedicated to this game, that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to uh, have a circle of friends who can all get their ideas together and pool them and see what happens. But that's a great question. Uh, I'm glad you asked that. I will say one thing uh, about um, t or actually two things. Uh, PTCGO is actually PTCGO is actually a a pretty decent way of testing if you just want to find like the <laughs> the fluidity of a deck. So like if you're just trying to like get a deck to run well, then PTCGO is actually not bad to have bad to use. Um, another thing is. That our style of playtesting really only works for um, non Nats level plus events, because quite frankly, at least this has been my my experience. Every time you try to like test before Nats, and then you get there, you find out all your testing was irrelevant because people <laughs> have just like everyone's ideas just come together and you go, man, I didn't think of that, and everyone just does that. So like. 
everyone like the week before Nats is like really when you got to feel where the meta game is going to be. So. Yeah, national is definitely different because we all get together for nationals. It's not just people in your area. At that point in time, like for example, myself, when I get to nationals, I start play testing. Uh, you know, in person with Kyle, I start play testing in person with Pram. These guys, um, you get so much better testing it because you have a, a group of actually very good players, uh, and you can, and you're all in one building and you're all just shooting ideas off of each other. So nationals is a completely different uh, monster. But for these smaller tournaments, that's pretty much how uh, most of us end up doing our play testing. Yeah. Um, so Ian Asplund uh, asks. Uh, hold on. Hey, uh, oh, let's say something. Yeah, we're not done training. with this yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, uh, one thing I want to point out again is uh, don't react too much to like two or three games of testing. This is something <laughs> Pram is notorious for. <laughs> 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 like I played him before uh, Worlds in Hawaii a couple years ago. He's playing his Gardevoir deck. I beat him like two or three times with Lux Chomp, and he just it's like. Screw this! I'm not playing Dust Nor anymore. I'm putting in Pokemon reversals. I'm like, <laughs> okay, this clearly is not a good decision. <laughs> you need to calm down and don't like freak out after two or three games. And thankfully, we convinced him to run Dust Nor instead of Pokemon reversal. Um, so don't go overboard just because you lose a couple games. You have to analyze how you lost and all that stuff. Uh, and the other thing is just, Prem, you have come up with some of the worst decks I've ever seen in my life. What? Over the years, <laughs> <laughs> that Waylord Electro was probably the worst thing I've ever Retired, seen. Retired, undefeated. Right? <laughs> you remember that? You remember that? All right, that Waylord Electro did not lose a single game. What is this? Yeah. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't mention its record. It never <laughs> lost a single game. Hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, and then you had the. Uh, you were completely set that the Entei Raikou. Legend would be the absolute what? monster. Nobody would be able to stop it. Why are you wearing my dirty <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, people can screw up. That's what, It's the importance of actually testing and not just using theory all the time. Yeah, you, have to have, you have to find a good balance between both. So. All right. Well, now that they've aired my dirty laundry, yes, I didn't think I thought Entei Raikou Legend was going to be the absolute Feel free best. to speak of all the horrible decks I've used over the years. but No, just, no, no. I'm going to save that's my last story. Oh, Donphan Dragons was actually kind of bad, game. too. Oh, the Mew Donphan thing? Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, fine. So I have a few bad theories. They happen. You played that's what Bertha happens. at Worlds. Oh, yeah, the Bertha's Bertha world. was smart. Bertha was smart. I just happened to not run into the mirror, ever. Bertha. But if I would have ran into the mirror, it would have all been in trouble. What? Didn't you lose to the mirror twice at, at that grinder? This was at Worlds? No, I don't... I didn't it's the it grinder, right. yeah. Oh, yeah, you lost to the right cause of four heads. Oh, speed. is that the one? Oh. I think I queued for that grinder, too. I queued in that That's grinder. That's heartbreak. Okay, yeah, I don't <laughs> want to talk about this. Um, Alright, anyways. Here we go. Ian Asplund asks, can, uh, can I have StarCraft to use your names and character codes? I need people to lose to. Well, sir, I've just been uh, deranked into Gold League, apparently, uh, after the placement matches, so I doubt you'd lose to me, but uh, uh, I'm going to be getting a new account. I've, I gave my account to my brother he, uh, originally, and he had his own name, and he doesn't use it anymore, so I'm going to buy my own and, and do that. But in the meantime, I, if you want to message me on Facebook, I will give it to you because it's his account, not mine. And Pram and Kyle are welcome to butt in any minute now. Uh, I, uh, oh, my screen name is Puka. I think the character code is character code is four three five. I don't know my character code, to be honest. <laughs> Let's see, because I have you guys on real ID, so. But my screen name is S H Panda five four two. So if you can find that, I guess. And yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, we we are big fanatics of StarCraft 2, in case you guys didn't know. Uh, we like to talk about it a lot in our spare time. We also talk That's about Dominion a lot in our spare time. Yeah, Drew's the outsider. Uh, hey, he really doesn't hey. do anything we all like to do. I mean, <laughs> you can play me in Words with Friends or something. It's just my <laughs> name. Drew Holton. <laughs> and he's also uh, not very creative with screening. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, me, Kyle, and Pram, we all like to play. We're very competitive against each other, especially me and Pram. 
and uh, we play Dominion a lot. We play uh, StarCraft 2 a lot, and uh, obviously Pokemon. That's pretty much it. That's that's our lives, guys. Sad but true. Um, Don't knock right. it. Living the life, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, all right, Frank Hamilton asks, how do you guys feel about the PTCGO situation? Bugs aren't really being fixed, and they're preventing Ooh. a secondary market from existing. Um, well, yeah, okay. L real quick, um, <clears throat> we've obviously been touching on this subject since PTCGO uh, has la had launched, um, I believe. Uh, and uh, we've been advocates of PTCGO. We've been detractors of PTCGO. We've been everything in between. Um, and uh, I think ultimately our stance lately has become we're not going to knock it anymore uh we're not going to obviously sing it praises that it doesn't deserve right now because that's the truth but obviously they're they fell on i, I don't want to say hard times but they they had a big tr big issue and they had to completely get a new company to to redo all their code so we can't give them you know um excuse my french crap <laughs> i bet you guys were expecting the worst word um we can't give them, you know, we can't give them trouble. Uh, at the end of the day, they're they're doing what they can, and I'm sure that they're having a lot of issues with this. So, um, yeah, uh, let's just focus on the good part of PTCGO, which is hopefully the future for it. And so be it. Uh, I, I choose not to use PTCGO lately, and that's just a choice that I've made because there's no point in it for me right now. Um, but hopefully when the product is finished, we'll all be able to enjoy it. Until then, there's no point in knocking it because ultimately it's not their fault. Uh, now it's just a matter of fixing the issue, not complaining about it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, outside of Jason Kaczynski, I'm probably the person who's most disappointed with the things that have happened with uh, PTCGO. But what I do know is that, um, you know, a new company took over in August. So I think right around August is when the open beta started which means that right when the open beta started, a new company took over, and they had to, like, learn the whole system. So I'm assuming this is why it's taken so long to actually get things done. Uh, a new company, it takes forever to learn how the, the original company designed the program and all that. So um, they have to go through that, and I heard they're completely remodeling the system. So uh, we have that to look forward to. Yeah, I think okay. basically what's happening is we're still using the old company's programming code for that. So they're keeping the new game code behind doors kind of thing and waiting until it's finished. So uh, just kind of bear with it. And when it's done, it's done. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah so uh, let's just focus on other sides of the Pokemon TCG for now. And let's just leave PTCGO alone for a little bit. See what happens. Um, <clears throat> all right, Mike Turtle. Predictions on how long it'll take for TCG to <laughs> fully fix all of Next Destiny's predictions <laughs> along the lines of seven months. Um, yeah, probably right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, to, re uh, to reiterate, it's really not a top priority to get the old code working. I mean, like, if I was in, like, if, if it's kind of like if you were in charge thing, what would you rather do, fix up broken code or just do it correct from just start it again and do it correct, right? You just kind of like, I'll just put like a little bit of effort in trying to keep it, keep everyone happy, but I'll put mo most of the effort into just trying to get a working game. Yep. Yeah, I think the most frustrating thing has been like they announced that certain things are going to happen by certain dates and then we still haven't seen them. Um, for example, the gem system coming to you in November 2011. Yeah. Waiting on that still. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the gym. Yeah. I, I think they kind of get overzealous with their announcing dates. They just really should just say coming soon. Then, because the word soon is really ambiguous. So. Right. Maybe well, let's get to the best question. Was. Here's the best question of the night, guys. Let's get to it. Clint Riddle asks, uh, how many X's are going to be run in Thunderdome? And if it's uh, still the best deck in the format. First of all. It's absolutely the best thing. <laughs> Why would you ever question that? It's pretty um, good. Thunderdome will probably have a couple of EXs at least. I would think two to three. Um, I, guess. I still haven't built the deck. I still haven't theorized the deck. So yeah, I'm at two EXs. You got Zekrom, right? Yeah. Okay, Zekrom, I'm, Zekrom, I'm literally at one Zekrom, one Mewtwo. Yeah, that's what I figured it would probably be. I hate to break it to you, Krim, but your boy Thunderous 
he's seen better days. Yeah. Not running anymore. Oh. Thunderous also got the boot. Uh, he became a mute. He grew up, became a mute to ex. <laughs> sure. And um, what everyone aspires to be. Now he he's he's still charging with those DCEs. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> hey man, you know what? Thunderous had his day. Thunderous was dominant in his day, and um, you know he he realizes that there's it's time to make way for for bigger Pokemon, and that's what he came in. Uh, but yeah, but Thunderdome is still the best deck in the format. Don't question it. Don't ever question it. Even when it rotates, it's still going to be the best deck in the format. Yeah, it's just the way it is. Like Artie. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Matt Shank asks, uh, in your opinion, what's the next Destiny's card that right now isn't very good, but has the most potential if it gets some help in upcoming sets? Uh, heavy uh, Ball. Don't say Shaman. Don't say Shaman. Um, yeah, Heavy Ball's definitely going to be better uh, later on, I think, but... Uh, Maybe. Uh, it's, it's still good. It's like, maybe. If they print something good that has three retreat, yes! Then again, <laughs> Ultra Ball's going to be... Ultra Ball's going to be... Um, but you would be. still run Heavy Ball if, like... If, like, if you don't have... If you're the card you want to search for, it specifically has three retreat. Same thing with Level Ball. You would run those balls before Ultra Ball. Unless you had some goal to have stuff in the discard. So. Okay. I'm looking for a card that's going to do really good with... Uh, with the dark sets, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, level ball? No. Eh, ultra ball's good. You can, like, discard two basic darks, and then trainer energy them back. Okay. Well, you guys haven't realized it yet, but my round deck is getting much better. Seismitoad, he now maxes out at 180 damage. With Wigglytuff. Yep. We got Wigglytuff. He's got round now. So all I know is I call round being good when the set first came out. Round and it will still be good. featured on uh, Bad Deck Monday. <laughs> round, but uh, it will be used. And is Wigglytuff a rare or uncommon? No, it's a rare. It's How a rare. <laughs> it's a rare. Oh no. Yeah, yeah so well, that is bad. Um, it's it's still going to cost over fifteen dollars, unfortunately. <laughs> but <laughs> no, size of toads are rare too. Wiggly tufts are rare. You can probably get them for about fifty cents each. <laughs> they gotta be cheap. Uh, experience share is probably going to get better um, as time goes along. I can't think of you any. You know, EXP share is actually stuff, really like, good right now. Yeah, it's very good. Right was now. it legal? I mean, Evo like, kind of like makes experience share kind of hard to play. No, no, it's like if if Mewtwo wasn't legal, then you you could play Guardi, uh, what's it, Gothitelle. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm taking a stab in the dark, and I'm saying Regigigas, just because it doesn't seem very good. <laughs> and hopefully it'll get better. Well, you know, you only have to get, if you just name every card, then you look like a theoretical genius, right? <laughs> yeah. and I've been using that, uh, that strategy for the last 12 years. Eventually, <laughs> somebody's going to catch on. Uh, I can't think of any card that isn't good right now that is probably going to be very good later on. Um, I really can't. Um, yeah. Maybe like Kyrie MX. Uh, I can see that maybe being okay one day. The Fire Chandler. There we go. I got it. Fire Chandler. I think Kyrie MX's first attack is pretty good. Yeah, I was just reading it. It's actually not bad. I like this. Oh, never mind. I found it. I found it. Hold the hold the press. Vanillix. Vanillix. Yes. This is not good. Exactly. Which one? But it will be good. What isn't good? Two scoops of knowledge, my friend. Two scoops oh, no, of knowledge. Oh, no, that card's actually terrible. Sorry. Two scoops of knowledge, my friend. Just play the old right. Alex. The Zebra, man. Zebra's gonna... Yeah, Zepstrika? Yeah. Man, I'm using that now on PTCGO. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, somebody said it was... <laughs> All right, uh, Andrew Corbin asks, "What's the favorite favorite EX besides me too? Did Kyle ever get his PTCGO problem fixed? And uh, why does that suck so much? Um, it feels like emerging powers all over again. Only me too is much more expensive than Catcher. Uh, that's a lot of questions by Carbon, but most of these questions are pretty good. Um, Guess I'll take it just because it involves me in one of them. Okay. Um, all right, so my favorite EX besides me too, 
Um, probably Zekrom. Seems like the best. Uh, did I ever get my PTC Geo problem fixed? So, I found one day that cards had disappeared from my collection. Sent an email, or filed a support ticket, which is pretty confusing, but I managed to file a support ticket. It's customer service. And uh, basically the response I got was, uh, we have no record of you ever trading these cards. However, we have no record of you ever having these cards. So there's nothing we can do. Thanks for using the Pokemon support system. Have a nice day. <laughs> and I was like, uh, <laughs> that's not a good answer. Uh, <laughs> you have to like, help me a little bit here. Um, not just say, tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks that your cards are missing, dude. Nothing we can do about it. Support team's just going, sup, son? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I kindly linked them to videos where I was, in fact, using these cards to prove that, yes, I did have them. And then they were like, oh, well, I guess we'll look into this further. <laughs> and so um, talked with them back and forth. Uh, at first they said, oh, look, we did find a trade where you traded away these cards. And then I sent them uh, screenshots of another video I had where I said, okay, I have this video, which is after the trade date you gave me, where clearly I still have these cards. And then um, got further and further, and then eventually uh, Dave Schwimmer actually emailed me, and he said, all right, we'll look into it. And apparently there was a trade that only the administrators on PTCGO could see that got accepted at some date. So I think... I, like, made a trade maybe around, like, August or something, and it just got accepted. But, you know, it doesn't show up in your trade history because it was it only shows it by when you made the trade. Did so, he say what cards you got? In, in he didn't say what I got, but he, he gave me what I traded away, which was consistent with what I was missing. So I guess it kind of got resolved, but still that's kind of a problem where... Only he could see it through the administrator's tools that this trade happened. Uh, makes you kind of skeptical a little bit. I mean, I believe it happened, but uh, I don't think that's a good good way to go about it. Just to tell someone, yeah, yeah, it happened. Only we can see it, but it happened. Um, needs to be a little more transparent. At and they said they've logged it. They're going to uh, look into it and fix it. So in the, at the end of the day, it did get resolved. So, um, the biggest problem I had was just the initial response that was, tough luck, <laughs> yeah. uh, better luck next time, thanks for playing. And, um, that was just my biggest problem, just customer service needs to improve a little bit. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> Only a little bit. Um, Man, you make, that quite, you make their letter sound nice. <laughs> I remember reading okay. it. They sounded One thing very that, uh, that I really want to suggest to people that use PTCGO and aren't necessarily experienced with these programs is uh, do a clean sweep at least once a week. Uh, when I was using PTCGO on a regular basis, I would go every couple of days, um, I would just delete every old trade that I had. And yeah, it can be a daunting task if you haven't done it in a long time. I mean, it, I honestly wasted well over an hour the first time I actually did it. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm I'll, not going to say that it was, yeah, I'm not going to say that it was, I mean, obviously I was. <laughs> I was like watching Netflix and doing it at the same time, but uh, yeah, I had a time. lot, a lot of trades. I know that it sounds like it's not worth the time, but if you actually are serious about your connections, you don't, you don't want to actually uh, have this, some of these things happen to you because most people don't have access to a lot of cards, and their collection is pretty much all they have. So them losing, say, a 220 L line or something like that, would be devastating to their uh, PTCGO account. So it's just, it's something simple. And the moment that you can actually clean it out. You no longer have to worry about this. I mean, seriously, it takes no, no more than like two minutes every other time. So it's just one time, you do a clean sweep, you avoid this happening to you, and then after that, it's simple. Just make sure you uh, maintain it. And uh, you're just going to save yourself a lot of headaches because apparently if the system is the way it is, uh, the way that it, it seems to be, thanks to Kyle's uh, misfortune, then, I mean, we have to do something to protect ourselves, I would think, and that seems like the best way to do it. And plus, my account just had too many trades. My account had like, Without exaggerating, at least 300 uh, open trades. So, yeah. Uh, I like to trade back in the day. Um, so, so yeah, my account has, like, at max, five open trades. At max. Yeah. Well, and I then, got hundreds that are still. And then, 
but usually like the same i want the same card over and over but i'm offering different things at different you know <laughs> so like once i get the card i want i'm just like close 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 oh and these are the two that went yes i got them <laughs> i do the same thing as brown <laughs> yeah it's like unless you're trying to amass like eight of everything for a program that uses Never. four <laughs> repeatedly <laughs> uh, all right yeah. so uh that was question number two <laughs> I don't remember the other questions. Why so the next one is, why does this set suck so much? Uh, <laughs> it's good. Just give it. Besides some... the EXs, obviously. It's, it's good. Just give it some time. Uh, give it some playtesting. Trainers play are good. Yeah, the trainers are good. Some of the Pokemon are solid, and the EXs are clearly good. So. You know why the set sucks? Because the EXs made everything else in the set suck. Yeah. Well, actually, if you look at it, if you got any one of the older sets right now. You'd be like, what the heck is this? I can't use more than, like, three of these cards. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's just the EXs that are just so much more powerful than everything else. Mm-hmm. And it's sad truth. That's just the way it's going to be. Um, it's also Gardevoir that could be good someday. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple good cards. Just got to look from. I am not asking the next question. I don't care who you actually are, Mr. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, he's got a bunch of random questions, random letters for his name, and uh, he oh. asked an inappropriate question. Uh, <laughs> all right, actually, I'm gonna ask it just because I'm actually curious. If you could replace Krim with any other Pokemon player, who would it be? Mind you, they'd have to be as talented and charismatic as me, and have as good a theory, a theoretical mind. Pokemon but player? You can't, find, you can't find anybody. Or yeah, yeah, any other Pokemon player? It's a tough question. Exactly. It's a tough question because there isn't actually somebody who would be able to replace. Me. There's so many <laughs> viable candidates. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I know. I'm, I'm like, I have a like, I have a list in my head of just going through them, and I'm just thinking, would this work? Would this work? <laughs> Graham pulls out an iPad, extends like a, attaches like a, a, a hard drive to it. He's like, all right. <laughs> let me let me load up my file of possible replacements. No, but um, go with uh, Joseph Bolton. Ooh, that's a good one. Close. You've been replaced. Um, Very close. I was thinking if you want someone uh, like who doesn't, if you want someone like Krim who can who just talks, but or do you want someone that's like close. insightful? <laughs> hmm. Let me go with Alvis. Try I, please. I, I was thinking about that. I was thinking Alvis. Um. Maybe Moss, just because he's so loud. All right, guys, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> he, he, would, he would be fun. Um, are we still going? I would say, I would say Jason, but he likes to argue way too much. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we would just get stuck on one topic with Jason. Like, <laughs> he, he would just, like, There's pass, he would pass topic up. everything right, not enough. interesting and then focus on Understood. one thing. Understood, all right. Congratulations, you guys answered the question. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Chuck, I guess. Chuck would Chuck, yeah, Chuck would storm off on show. show. <laughs> <laughs> Special guest host. Oh, actually, I do have a really good replacement who's not either one of those. Uh, Krim 2. Uh, this oh, yeah. person from Philadelphia who looks like Krim. <laughs> He's been tagged on Krim's Facebook, so if you see someone who's tagged as Josue Rohano, but is not Josue, that would be him. Yeah. So next question is from Daniel Musgrave. Uh, will Regigigas EX uh, in the truth be good? Is the truth going to be good? I guess is a better question. Um, Terrakion one-shots Regigigas. That's, it sure does. It does. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, sorry to inform you of that, but there's your answer. Terrakion is so good, man. The fact that it survives past... Uh, the big EX. Trakian also one shots Zachrom EX. Yeah. Trakian yeah. is just amazing. Such a good card. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, will the truth be good? Uh, it hasn't been good for a while. Um, I think it continues to underperform. So. Depends on uh, if people stick with their old decks. Like if people are still playing. Uh, Kyurum Cabalion Electro deck. And it has like an absolute auto win against Ross's deck. So, um, people are still playing that. Truth is going to be horrible. People are still playing Chandelure. Truth is going to be horrible. 
Um, I mean, even Mewtwo probably puts the nail in the coffin for that deck. Because it can still just knock out anything in one hit if you get enough energy on it. Yeah, you don't even need that many energy because they're putting energy on them. So it's like yeah. they take like three energy and you have like three energy. That's like 120, four energy, 140, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And that's just one Mewtwo. Alright, very next question will be from... Da, 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 da. Um, Boom. Okay, off and abs. Uh With the release of Next Destiny, do you think that there's going to be any new decks capable of effectively use, utilizing Electro Prime? Also, do you think that uh, Coke or Cage variants will still be able will still be up to snuff? And do you think that Kiram is a dead card now with all these high HP EX cards or will it still be effective in some decks? I'll answer this uh, one really short. take the first part. I'll answer this one really short. Uh, okay. Electrode's still good. Kiram will still be played because it's still really good. I mean, that, that attack deserves to be on an EX, let's be honest. Um, and Level Ball just makes Trode over the top. Like, so... Uh, Deck's still good. Keep playing it. Just add in Mewtwo. Uh, he he asked uh, if there's going to be any new decks capable of effectively, effectively using Electric. Oh, uh, no. Probably <laughs> not. I mean, maybe like they swap like out Basics answers. for other EXs or something, but it's essentially the same deck. Okay. It's just Basics and Electrode. Anybody disagree? No. No. I think yeah, Kiram has to be still good versus, like, evolution decks. It's absurd. You get it going a couple of turns, you win the game. It keeps them in check, right? That's the yeah. that's the most important thing is, like, evolution decks don't have all this time in the world to set up because the moment that Kiram comes out and starts doing its attack, the very next turn you better evolve or else you're just done. So, that's big. Yeah, Plus, whenever I played, um, like, that Typhlosion Magnezone deck, I used it at a bunch of cities. Whenever I played against... Electrode, like it would, it was literally just a 50 50 matchup from the turn that they got to glaciate. <laughs> did I get to evolve? If I did, I would win. If uh, I didn't get to evolve, everything on my field died. <laughs> yep. So that's the power of Kiram. Yeah. yeah, it's even good versus that Celebi deck. Yeah, like, okay. like if they have like a couple Celebes, you just go glaciate, glaciate. I got surprises, great. All right. Uh, let's see. Very next question is uh, Andrew Wambolt. Assuming EX pull rates stay the same, how much do you think Dark Ride EX will cost? That is known as the Mewtwo Killer. It is an essential part of the Dark Deck, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thoughts? I don't know because it depends on how many EXs are in the set. Like if it's it, it, there's a lot of EXs in the set, so if it's at the same number every time, which I highly doubt then it should go up to around the same where Mewtwo is. But since it's probably going to be a lot less EXs with the same EX ratio, like 3 per box, hmm, it'll probably be, I don't know, 30? Less. Yeah, maybe 30. Cool. That's a good answer. Depends on whether or not it's in a 10 or a box or whatever. Yeah, I was not including 10. If it's in a 10, 15, awesome. 5... <laughs> fifteen, five to fifteen, somewhere they around there. Away. Yeah, yeah, like passing, passing them out, <laughs> Just passing them out. Pull and toad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ismail O L asks, do you guys think the energy version of Chandler is still going to be playable with EXs if you just tech tech a Mewtwo, and uh, is Shaman still going to be in the format for long? Um, real quick, my very first theory uh, uh, before states was. I believe Chandler is going to be uh, very playable. That's my very first theory. I have not actually tested this format. <laughs> if I'm wrong, hey, add it to the tab. But, uh, yeah, that's my first one. But the energy version of Chandler, um, which one's that? The, just the, is he just talking about the, like, a, a I think Chandler it's, I think it's control deck? Chandler Vileplume with a couple energies in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, that was my theory. Whether I'm right or wrong is still yet to be seen. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, and is uh, Shaman still going to be in the format for long? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, its, it's power is uh, pretty unique. So it'll find room. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be played somewhere. Uh, I 
I don't know about Chandelure, though. I feel like Zekrom and Rushroom kind of just give it the slap that it needs to not be in the format. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the the big question is, will Re- Zekrom and Rushroom EX be dominant or at least uh, heavily played to the point where they just don't let uh, Chandler do its thing? Yeah. If that's the case, then yeah, obviously Chandler is going to be dead. But if it's not, which obviously is what my theory is relying on, um, then no, uh, I think that Chandler is still going to have some sort of a place in this format. Um, but yeah, Jack Eiler, uh, have you noticed how broken Amoongus is on PTCJ? It's every turn, not just when he's evolved. <laughs> and then Ian says, uh, everything's broken on PTCJ, buddy. That is pretty broken. Uh, poison and confuse your opponent every turn. Wait, what? Pretty good. What is? Well. Wow. Amoongus, it's it's supposed to be uh, coming into play power, but on PTCGO you can use it every turn. Oh. So you can confuse and poison them every turn. It's pretty good. Just play 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that goes from, like, unplayable to amazing. Unplayable to Mewtwo level. Uh, it's on Mewtwo it's status. Oh. <laughs> Mewtwo status. You would play Amoongus? He's got a cool name, man. It counts for something. It's an evolution, right? <laughs> yeah. It's you see right. fungal or whatever the basic is, you capture that really quickly. Fungus? Yeah, fungus. Did you see fungus? You capture it really quickly and hope it doesn't evolve into among us anytime soon. <laughs> because if it does, let me tell you, you're probably dead. Alright. So. Alright. Richard Ricky Gao. Says I demand online Dominion game right. Uh, uh, online Dominion game night, make it happen. It doesn't sound too bad. A little talk to it. Uh, online Dominion. We actually do have an on, on, online Dominion night. It's after the show, <laughs> generally. <laughs> yeah, generally, we uh, we play a little bit of Dominion. All of us, but Drew, because Drew's a party pooper. Go to bed, Drew, man. Party pooper. <laughs> I, um, I didn't go to work till like 8 p.m. tonight. So taste yeah. it. Taste. It. <laughs> That's what uh, we normally do as our little uh, after party, <laughs> after uh, after the show. show. Yeah. However, I wanted to ask you guys if they wanted to play a little bit of StarCraft and maybe stream it after the show for anybody interested. Sure, I'll leave we'll the stream up. Goes down. I'll leave the stream up if you guys want to keep watching us embarrass ourselves with StarCraft. Then go ahead. Get so, people yeah. in the chat, see if they want to play. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If anybody plays StarCraft in the chat and uh, would like to play with us, the most dominant... <laughs> Starcraft players of all time, then please <laughs> let us know. Uh, we'll make it happen tonight. You can watch us play Desert Strike. <laughs> watch the computer just freeze. <laughs> Alright, Brit 5 asks, uh, what do you think of OGS now that I'm seeing not out? I think OGS is underpowered now that the, the big guys left. Um, I think a lot of what happened in TSL is going to happen to OGS. And that's uh, all the way now. OGS is still, I, I don't know. I, I still like OGS. Uh, they have... Um, Supernova, Finn, uh, STC. A lot of good Terrans. Um, yeah, but like, do you remember team leagues? Or it would just be like, alright, all of our guys just lost. Go MC. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, don't get me wrong. Have a 50-50 shot or Don't get winning. me wrong. <laughs> uh, I think the MC leaving was a bigger hit than Nada leaving in terms of their team roster. But, uh... Yeah, well, you know, uh, I I still like them. I still like a couple players on OGS. <laughs> I can't believe we're going into a detailed discussion. Of this. Next. <laughs> all right. Um. All right. That's actually a question that we're going to get to at the end of the night. Uh, Jason Patrick and Jericho, because he asked uh, the Top Cut Uncensored episode, when is it happening? The Top Cut Uncensored episode is kind of our way of uh, letting loose a little, uh, little chance for you guys to actually see what we're like uh, without being polite and, and all this other stuff. Um, I guess that's not the right way to word it, but yeah, either, way, what I'm, <laughs> either way, what I'm trying to say is, uh, if you guys want to see us uncensored, let us know. Uh, we're not sure if that's something that the, the, uh, the general public would like to see or not. Maybe they just don't want to see, uh, you know, their, their hero, their icon, Kyle, um, yeah. say curse words or drink on stream. Maybe, maybe they do. If you guys would like to see I a won't. drinking episode or uncensored, let us know, though. Uh, we'll I make won't it drink alcohol, but I will buy a gallon of milk and bring it. <laughs> well, uh, you could put alcohol in the milk. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> what do you mean gross? 
<laughs> All right. Just so get my cold milk. <laughs> Uh, if you guys want to see it happen, just let us know. Uh, we're not sure if that's something that you guys are interested in or not. Uh, obviously, we'd make it a mature only, mature audience is the only thing, and it'd be kind of like a like a once a year thing or once every uh, like a bi yearly thing just to hang out. Uh, have that's you guys quickly, hang out that quickly turns into a weekly thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it'd be more of a hangout thing where you guys could just uh, you know say um, say what's up to us and all that good stuff. So if you guys are interested in it, just uh, let us know on the Facebook page or email us at topcuppokemon at gmail.com. Um, Corey Goss, thoughts on Typhlosion Rush Ram with Me Too EX? It fell victim to the Tornadus Celebi deck, so that's true. I'm not thinking it's that great. That's true. The, tor- the, the Celebi uh, deck is very good against <laughs> Typhlosion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really not, but... You know, because Celebi resists. Well, it, I kind of look at it like this. Hold on, hold. You do realize Celebi does not attack, correct? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <That's> my joke. <laughs> it's absolutely irrelevant that Celebi is weak to fire. I had no idea it didn't attack. Keep your mouth shut. All right. Um... <laughs> I, I still like uh, Typhlosion, though, but it, it's it's on its last leg. I haven't tested yet, so I have no idea. It was not good when I tested or played with that at City, so... It's all right. I don't think it's great. No, I lost my place in the nasty Dongryu game. Uh, watching? Oh, man. No, no, no. I accidentally... I meant to refresh the Facebook page and... I refresh my nasty honor you game. All right. Um, spoiler alert. Shut your mouth. No spoilers. <laughs> I've not seen last night's episode. Uh, I want to consider my game three was pretty good. Fresh explosion and thunder down. You guys think you can make it? Man, you All spoiled right. it. You know he knows they're going to game three. <laughs> I know. I was wondering if you would notice. <laughs> All right. Jonathan Crespo asks. I want to consider a mungus in my decks like Fresh Explosion and Thunderdome. Do you think I can make it work? Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. yes, if you're playing PTCGO. If you're playing PTCGO, Among Us, every deck. 1-1 one, one line, every deck. Uh, it's got a great power, I'll, I'll give it that. Uh, but I don't know if you want to actually waste all these deck spots and Seeker and all that. Um, so no, I mean, ultimately I would say no, but I think it's actually a pretty cool power that it's got. So. It's an ability. It's yeah, it's an Switch played. Apologize. Switch exists. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, unless anybody wants to disagree with me, we're going to go with no there. Uh, Dustin Zimmerman, do you guys feel as though there are any cards that haven't been mentioned much, but might perform well during states? I think we'd have to look back at, uh, past sets, and, um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any. Uh, I think that just VX are, honestly, uh, we keep saying this, but they really do, um, dominate the format, and they, they're going to be very important factors and, and basically it's going to be like the the guardi x uh, the guardi days where you you if you don't pass the guardi test you don't play the deck and uh, now it's going to be a mewtwo slash zachary x test it's just the way it's going to be um and can anything really survive 150 damage well it's not really know. survive it at this point it's kill them I'm before sure they that. kill you yeah. <laughs> uh, i think at this point i, I mean obviously we've been mentioning you uh Mew prime for a while I think that's the only card that, off the top of my head, is going to be... You know, I actually effective. like Mew Prime a yeah. lot. Yeah. You start with it? Uh, oh, man. You're so you're in such good shape versus those yeah. DXs. By the way, did you guys actually look at the name of Amoongus' ability? Nope. No. Because I like it. What is it? Spore Prize. Spur Prize. Oh, wow. Spore. Spore, spore prize. prize. I don't even know how to say it. It's, that's Spore Prize. Spell. Right? <laughs> spore Prize. Spore Prize. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> That's right up my alley. I should have called it Spore, spore Surprise. Nope. That's Spore no, Surprise. surprise. <laughs> Chad says, uh, yeah, Mew is good until you get turn one by Mew. That's a good point. <laughs> yes, it is susceptible to being turn one. Mew so, still has the same problem uh, it's always had. If you go second, it sucks. <laughs> if you go first and you get to see off, all right, things are looking up. So, man, if you have to go second and see off, or if you go second and then you don't get to see off on the first turn, <laughs> things are not good. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, Bianchi wants Kyle to say kite. I have no idea why, but Bianchi is a member of the top set, so we must we must adhere to his... Uh, I know where he's going with it. That's not good. Okay. <laughs> we will not adhere to <laughs> All right, Angel Miranda, uh, what do you guys think will be the top decks with, uh, what do you think, think the top decks will be with next Destinies? Um, Go for it. Thunderdome. Yeah, Thunderdome, Trode. Uh, top decks are most played decks. Top decks. All right, then Celebi Mewtwo's off the list. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Celebi Thund- Tornado still. That's 16 and 0. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's on the list. <laughs> no, but uh, probably Thunderdome, Electrode. Um, I, I, I know I shouldn't, but I really want to put Embor Magnezone on there. Don't do it. It's going on. The, it's, guys, it's on my list. Durant, oh, Durant. Yeah, Durant here Durant. to stay. It's not going away. Uh, Durant's probably best deck in format. Uh, it beats Mewtwo. That's all you need to know. And uh, that's why it's best second format. So uh, to recap, what decks do you think are going to be top decks? Durant, Thunderdome, Trode, and uh, a favorite of Embor Magnezone. Yeah, Embor Magnezone. Trode actually, uh, his power is pretty good right now because obviously the EX is kind of mitigate the one prize. Um, so uh, Trode is probably going to be a pretty big, pretty big. Uh, uh, pretty big game in this format, I would think. Terrakion's actually really good versus Mewtwo. Uh, if they don't have Eviolite. Rather, if they if you catch them without Eviolite for one turn. Because, like, if you have Eviolite, they can't one-shot you back unless they have, uh, five energy. Is that right? Uh, yeah, five energy. If so you have if, two energy in play? If you have three, if you land, start land-crushing, they have to have five on Mewtwo to one-shot you. Not doing yeah. math. I'm not falling for that trip. <laughs> you can figure it out yourself. No, I've already done right. the math. Okay. So I know. <laughs> so, if you catch them, like, without Eviolite for one turn, and you land crush them, you're actually doing two shots to each other, regardless of whether they play Eviolite the next turn or not. So. Aren't you doing 70 if they have an Eviolite? Yeah, you might need to play he, a plus power or something. Yeah, he meant like you I think he meant like, they don't play the Eviolite first. No, if you don't play Evil, if they don't play Eviolite first, uh, you probably you need one plus power if they play another Eviolite on this. If they play an Eviolite on the second one, but if they don't play Eviolite at all, because some decks running Mewtwo are just splashing Mewtwo, yeah. and they, they're they're like set, setup decks, so they don't run Eviolite, so you can catch them there. Or they can they won't throw Eviolite on Mewtwo because they think their Mewtwo's is gonna get Mewtwo'd anyway, so they don't need it. You know, so. Oh, gotta love our new format. Um, I wish somebody would have kept track of how many times we said Mewtwo over the course of the night. Yeah, uh, someone we can go back into the episode, rewatch it, <laughs> and then put a counter on Mewtwo counter. I'm yeah. not doing that. Yeah. Play the right. drinking game. Somebody would be dead by now. <laughs> 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 I saw a, a TV show um, where it was just people like taking tequila shots on camera, and you you have like a a bunch of people. I think it was some like eight people, uh, different varying sizes and and ages and everything, and they were just doing it kind of like as a test. And just like whenever you gave up, like you I mean, you had to wait a while to give up. You couldn't just give up because you you felt a little sick. No, you had to wait until you were actually done. And you would see all these different people. The big guy, like, the big guy probably took third, I think. And he just crashes. Like, you see him take a shot, and he goes, like, Ooh! like the ground shakes and everything. Um, and uh, uh, a girl ended up winning it, which is weird, because, I like, nobody expected that. Um, I wish I, I wish I would have kept that, because that's actually really interesting. Um, a girl that weighed something like 140 pounds or something like that ended up winning that contest. She's a tank, let me tell you. And uh, that ends our show tonight, boys. Um, let's see. Woo! I'm not going to answer Justin Sanchez's question because you're a jerk. I will. Uh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly it's me. Um, the two people that don't play. Uh, but, yeah, if you guys want to stick around at the end of the show, we will be playing StarCraft, and you guys are more than welcome to join us if you guys have the StarCraft game. And this is just for people interested in the game itself or if you guys want to see us make fools of ourselves um 
thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, we saw, we are sorry about the hiatus that we took, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can all start getting prepared for states together. Um, you guys are more than welcome to join us every Thursday, hopefully <laughs> from here on out. <laughs> and um, and yeah, we'll we'll see what we can do, and uh, hopefully you guys can see the evolution of uh, Krim and Drew as we slowly start to get prepared for for states. Him his uh, one uh, state uh, championship. Uh, and me, uh, hopefully my three. So, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, I'm Krim, and uh, I'm going to pass it on to Mr. Krim over here. Um, yeah, you know, all the events we go to, come say hi. We're always, you know, always want to meet you guys. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Michael Primewat. I'll tr I promise I'll try and use it more. Uh, it's going to be my, one of my goals come, uh, to use it a lot, come states. So, yeah. Uh, Kyle? Dude, Drew. Oh, Drew. Yeah. Um, follow me on Twitter, guys. I tweet a lot of work when I'm bored. I <laughs> can read that. Um, you just start hashtagging your woos. Woo! <laughs> how many don't? How many O's do I use? Uh, let's, let's say four. That's for you to decide. It's your hashtag. Hashtag woo on four or five. I, I think four or five is sufficient. Like seventeen is the right answer, but uh. <laughs> Well, see, you might run out of characters in Twitter for 17 moves. That is a good uh, point you bring up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, follow me on Twitter. Hopefully I'll start playing, but who knows when that will happen. And uh, see you next Thursday. <laughs> All right. And before before Kyle gets to this thing, somebody asked me a question, uh, which is, what do you think your realistic chances are of making Worlds uh, now that you only have 12 championship points? I have 18. It just took a long time for them to update my last uh, my last tournament. <laughs> I didn't go to as many tournaments as I wanted to go to. Um, I think due to ratings, if I do end up getting on, into the bubble, which just means that I'm going to have to do extremely well at states and regionals, um, then due to rating, I should be fine because I should be at something like 1,800 rating um, after it updates. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think my odds are very good, but then again, I didn't go to as many terms as I would have liked. Uh, Battle Roads, if I'm on the bubble, I will go to Battle Roads. You guys have my word. If I'm not on the bubble, Battle Roads are still too far away, so it's not going to happen. But, yeah, take it away, Kyle. All right, thanks, everybody, for watching. I know this show has been going a little long, so we'll try to wrap it up. Um, just thank you for following us, supporting us. Just a couple of guys trying to grow the game, expand the game. You know, same speech I've given every episode. And uh, a couple please of you follow us. What? A couple of you mean four guys, not two. Cool. All right. Yeah, he means by couple. A couple usually means two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Or a couple of couples. <laughs> All right. So follow us on Twitter, Top Cut Pokemon, and on Facebook, Top Cut Pokemon, and on YouTube, Top Cut Pokemon. And also check out our uh, our website, thetopcut.net, where we post all of our videos. I have part of a Florida Marathon report on there. We should really start getting more articles and videos and stuff on there soon. Um, if you have any suggestions for us, please email us at thetopcutpokemon at gmail.com. And uh, thanks again for watching. Hopefully see you guys next time. If you liked us, please spread the word. And that's about all I have. Yep. Woo. See ya. See ya.